What's up, peoples? Finishing up with some web work here. Be with you momentarily. Happy Easter, everybody. six hours we'll see how it goes maybe seven are you having a day <laughs> okay so I have to get this link here from Twitter and then I post this link in about 12 different places where I tell people about the fact that I'm playing you now sends Twitter this cool link which goes straight to this broadcast and then I take that link and I post it in this place where I have all these hashtags and stuff set up my day's been great actually talked with a friend in Sweden for a little while and then uh, I, I woke up and I ate a beautiful salad with uh, some lentils on top of it and uh, crushed nuts actually sesame seeds and walnuts a little bit of cashew and some pecans and uh, got my coffee and my green tea together then I went and I selected really cool photographs all over the place on the internet included them all in this huge post and resized all the all the pictures and got several of them together and left one out but I ended up posting it on a comment and now I'm taking the links and I'm posting it all over the place. So I've been busy for, I don't know, the last seven hours doing, just preparing to play guitar. Simply preparing. And being prepared is really the way to go when you want to end up with a result that you appreciate. So now I have to go through this whole little series of tap dances in order to post this stuff on Facebook and on Twitter. Clicking all these things. And watching color wheels spin. What's up, Pablo? over there oh you, it's in the frame isn't it I don't have the keyboards in my frame I'm barely able to watch it yeah I just have a, the key the keyboard they should you should be able to see the keyboards uh, yeah I just stick some keys down and find some cool patches but uh I'm posting stuff right now I'll be with you in a second hey why isn't this work oh here we go Boy, that's an antagonistic looking picture. I meant it to be a little bit more uh, godly, but uh, their pictures suck anyway. But that looks terrible. Looks like, hey, you want a piece of me? 
But uh, yeah, you go to my Facebook and you'll see what it looks like. It's kind of hysterical, or maybe you can see whatever they post here. But the link that I got for my little picture, <laughs> it's obnoxious. But uh, okay, so I'm gonna close out of that page, and I can close out of this Twitter page. I can paste this here. What's up, Brady? Music is my drug, Brady. Thank you for your interest. I'm in the middle of making about 22 different posts all over the place on Twitter and different various social accounts. Just kidding. More like 12. While I'm trying to talk to you, and I haven't even started playing, so uh, if you haven't seen me before, this is the way it starts out. Every time. Well, not with this song. I just made this riff up as I was sound checking right before I went live and tuning up. take this little link I created whenever my browser frees up from being frozen up and then I paste it on the pictures I posted 33 pictures today like I do most days between 10 and 30 pictures resize them all and make sure they all fit beautifully in this nice expression oftentimes I uh, uh, feature an artist. Today I featured Amanda Sage. I have incantation, invocations for whatever I play. Usually every, every time I play I have something I think of. Today obviously it is Easter, so it's Easter music mosaic. Uh, love, respect, appreciation, ascension, meditation, elevating consciousness. And that was all hashtagged and I put that out on a on uh, both Twitter and Facebook in some form. Facebook was more than 140 characters, so we left out the elevating on Twitter. But I haven't sent those yet, but I have sent them in a couple necessary places on Facebook at the moment. And a couple more to go. So that's how I spend my morning. All these, all these were ready to go. All these links were all set up in all the boxes, but I can't send the link until I get the link from Twitter or from you now that sends it to Twitter. And that's when I go live with it. And that's the only way I can tell people I'm actually playing. Otherwise, who knows what'll happen. Could crash right now for all I know, but at least it's up and running. And that's the way I roll every day. I'm doing a hundred straight days. I'm on like day 50 something. I don't know, I started February uh, 7th. Hang on. All right, it's there. Cool. At the top of one page and not another. I think I'm good to go in all these browsers. Ah, not this one. My music mosaic page on Facebook, which is what it is that I call that I do. 
What it is that I call, what it is that I do. Hey man, what it is that you do? I do music mosaics. This idea, I had Michael Oldfield, if you know Tubular Bells. <laughs> I had that in mind when I made this up. I'm like, I wanna make a cool little Mike Oldfield thing. Some people know it as the theme from The Exorcist. me I'm still busy posting posting all over the place here trying to carry on a conversation trying to like on this but it won't let me like on the post Facebook sends out limited amounts of notifications about whatever your friends are doing I don't know how it selects who or what gets notified but if you really want it done right, you have to send out invitations and there's hoops to jump through with that too. It's, it's important to get a hold of people. When you're not famous, you have to do that. When you are, people track you down everywhere you go. Sorry, I'm not reading the chat room right now, but I'm kind of seeing that people are in there saying stuff. Let's see. All right, I think I'm good to go on this browser. Close it out. And now, over to here. And that happened, okay, sweet. All right, so some people might even be here from Facebook already. really from Facebook. Not many people are. Some people say they're from Facebook when you look at their profiles. I don't know what that means. There's a lot of people that work for Facebook if that's the case. Alright. Go. Done that. I think I'm done with that side of the world. Now. So close to being able to jam freely. Like I said, a whole series of hoops I gotta jump through in order to get all this stuff done, and it's a it's a process. If I do the wrong thing, I have to like go and open up a whole nother browser that I've closed down and get the link. Alright. running I don't need that on bad all right um I think we're close I should be giving you more notes. Instead of just those same ones, but we'll get to it. Hang on. See if this browser has anything to offer. No, quit that one. Sweet. One more to quit. And the invocations I like, you know, they're all based on really basic things. This one, I should say every day. I invoke and evoke the divine loving consciousness of the infinite spirit within me. I am a clear and open channel for sound, light, and love. May the sound of light uplift me. May the light of sound guide me. May the love of spirit embrace and protect me. May the sacred sound of my soul now resonate through me for the healing and harmony of all. 
Namaste. Stretch out my screen. There we go. Sweet. All two of you in here.
be my first break since I started an hour and 53 minutes ago and it's been a ride it's always a new experience no matter what I think I'm ready for or even how sound check goes if there is one a brand new thing just flows through me and the more I go with it <laughs> the better off we all are Oh, it's a warm one here today. I'm glad you guys finally showed up. You know, I was playing for almost nobody. Two people and one second, one second Ed and Anna and Mika. Blessings to all of you. Happy Easter. And I, thinking out loud, I definitely was, uh, I was definitely, you know, trying to be as close to the Christ consciousness as I could, at least invoking the beauty and the joy within that. Invoking a lot of different things, invoking my own manifestations, invoking other people's healings, invoking healings for pain that I've caused any other people, invoking communication. Appreciation, joy, and love. Pleasure, Talia. I'm Matthew. Oh, I wonder. I don't know, my arm rubs up on my guitar and it makes it itch. I do know I got into a bunch of poison ivy a couple of years ago. I wonder if I've sweated into that stuff. Surely that stuff, I know I got it all over my guitar then. I had it everywhere, but uh, I don't know if that it stays with you or not. Surely it would go away after a couple of years. I think it's just the paint and the wood. Lord. So, yeah, I'm really, really thrilled that people would spend their Easter with me, that Anna would rush home from dinner with her sister just so she could draw and meditate and listen to me play guitar, or whatever it is that she does, experiencing what it is that I do. Thank you. And two people, and Pat shows up and starts giving me treasure chests of wonderful stuff. I'm going to have to play again in a second here, huh? <clears throat> Two hours. That was a good sound check. Every show has its different ups and downs. I wish I could do seven hours of pure perfectness, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Apparently I have food waiting on me later, which is good because I don't want any now, but I will soon. That always happens. We get hungry and we have to eat. We can't eat once and for all. We can't really do anything once and for all. We have to keep 
doing it. That's what I'm trying to do here. This seems to be working out. Last Friday was what perfection? No, I didn't play. I didn't play a perfect show. I had issues, but there was fun. Much, much fun. Much goodness. But you know, we certainly can be perfect, whatever that is. Since it's a subjective term, it's it's a term that's individual to different people. Certain perfection is different. Some people would think a perfect person is like this. Other people think a perfect painting is like that. I had all of like two people watching me for the first 45 minutes in here. <laughs> you know, people didn't think anything about that was perfect. I watched them click on me and click out of here, and and I was. Eventually, I just forget it all and start playing. We're perfect and we're flawed. We're perfectly flawed. That's the thing some people really don't like to admit is that they have some, some shortcomings, whatever those are, whatever things that disappointed them. They hope they got taller. They wish they were thinner. They wish they were smarter. They wish they had blonder hair, browner hair, smaller feet, whatever. We're perfectly flawed and when you can, with the way, our, whatever we say, what we do, how we treat people, all that stuff is, you know, there's room to be improved almost everywhere. And if we can see one another with their flaws and be okay with that, then that's a really happy relationship. But sometimes if you point out flaws, people go running from you because they want you to see what they think is the, their own image of themselves. And they don't even believe that image of themselves, but they want you to buy it. And once you say, I don't really buy that, but I do love you and your flaws, they usually can't stick around for that. Very few people understand that it's okay that they have flaws. <laughs> it gives us something to do, doesn't it? Something to work on. Glenn, rock and roll. Thank you, Glenn. I'm going to click on you. I'm going to fan you back, but could crash my browser. All right, we're cool. But I'll fan you back later. Thank you. I'm groovy. I'm at the two-hour mark now. I've played for about... It took me 15 minutes to get all my links sent out once I went live tonight. And so I've been playing for about an hour and 45 minutes straight. This is my first break. And it feels good to have a 20-pound guitar off my neck. But uh, it's been a good day. I'm going to play some more. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, no, you don't. Matter of fact... You, you don't you don't try to don't try to change anybody but you know you can bring up things like you know would you address me this way sometimes instead of that way or or but you know other, other stuff you you know I wouldn't I don't know it's 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 a tough situation I don't live with anyone I'm totally single <laughs> so, so apparently I don't have any of that dynamic worked out yet, but one day I guess I will. Have you heard me play? <laughs> I've posted a hundred and... 20 hours here, maybe a hundred and I actually I've posted like 170 hours in the last uh, two months. Um, and, and, uh, I like, I like all music. If it's music originated, I like all sounds. If it's got heart, if it's got soul, I, man, I mean, you know, how many bands 
Can I list? Uh, do I have a favorite one? Let's go with the Beatles if you want to talk rock and roll. And then if you want to talk heavy rock and roll, go with Led Zeppelin. And then we'll branch out from there to everybody else. Deep Purple, Jethro Tull, Moody Blues, you know, Pink Floyd, Santana. I'll go on and on and on. Fucking Eric Clapton, Pink Floyd, Steve Hillage, Michael Hedges, Miles Davis. Uh... How about Traffic, uh, fucking, you know, John McLaughlin, Al Demiola, Steve Morris, Jimmy Herring, Grateful Dead. What do you want? Blue Oyster Cult? W whatever, man. <laughs> Don't Fear the Reaper, uh, you know, Some Enchanted Evening. I had that live album way back in the 70s. Um, on Your Feet or On Your Knees, great double live album. I had that one. Um... Cultosaurus Erectus, that was when they did the what, burning for you thing, whatever, Sticks, Kansas, goes on and on and on, Genesis, fucking ELP, Steve Hackett, Gong, Frank Zeppa, Cat Stevens, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Harry Nielsen, I can name bands till the cows come home, brother. <laughs> right on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sabbath is great. You know, my favorite Sabbath album is uh, Never Say Die. That That is just, that is, that, that is mind-blowing to me, man. It's so, it's such a departure from ever. It's like a, the best garage album ever made. Oh yeah, I was I was playing uh uh I was playing an interval relationship earlier today to on this jam that was out of a David Bowie song actually. That's the one place I had recognized it. It was in the uh it, it was in his song where he revisited Ashes to Ashes and Funk to Funky, we know Major Tom's a junkie. <laughs> I forget what the name of that song was, but uh, yeah, I kind of played some kind of riff out of that. It's, intervals are the relationship between two notes, and that's what really makes any kind of riff happen, is this one little relationship you have between these two notes in that riff. Yeah, well, listen to, l listen to Never Say Die, man. G give that thing a chance. It's like... It's like... Uh, uh, there, one side is particularly cool. It's got Shockwave on it and Over to You and uh, there's there's one particular side. I'm, I'm not really happy, as, as happy about the other side, but the whole thing is so cool because it it brings out their, their influences in a classical and jazzy way. It's the jazziest, classicalist album that Sabbath has. And uh, I go everywhere, you know, fucking Woody Guthrie, Joni Mitchell, uh, big band music, Mozart, Bach, Paganini, Vivaldi, Beethoven, whatever, Brahms, Sibelius. Um, and, uh, and more. But there is, there is just no place to settle. I have 2,000 records, so, you know, whenever... Whenever you really get into a band, you appreciate everything they do if you really like them, and then you go through their whole catalog, and then you wear that out, and you have to get another one. Aw. Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't play you out. I'll play in a minute. Acoustic stuff? I don't know. Leo Kotke, Bela Fleck, Doc Watson... Uh, Michael Hedges is my very, very favorite acoustic player ever. He died in like 97. Made me very, very, fa very sad. But he was, he was the shit. Michael Hedges is it. I saw him like 10 times. You have a beautiful sleep, Pat. I appreciate it. And, uh, 
of course, you know, Bob Dylan, Arlo Guthrie, whatever. <laughs> Leftover salmon, kind of, kind of acoustic-y. Um, <laughs> string cheese incident. Rising Appalachia. Great, great female band. Uh, the Whale and Jennies. Allison Krauss. Emmy Lou Harris, Linda Ronstadt, Ricky Lee Jones, Joni Mitchell again, Sarah McLaughlin, uh, Lorena McKennett, Tangerine Dream. Oh yeah, that's not acoustic. Um, Philip Glass. I can Hello, Happy Bunny Day, Kimberly. Thanks for strolling on in. You caught me at a two-hour break. It, it was pretty psychedelic. We'll see if it gets any better. I swear I'm getting better. One day people are going to have me out in public and play in front of them. I'm trying to get good so people will want me to play out in public. Of course you're heading out. Oh, you, you like hearing me talk? Most people don't like hearing me talk. I thought you said you were heading out. I can't read well. I like hearing you talk too, Kim. <laughs> Om. So, uh, yeah, I have been I have been playing some music for Ascension, for for forgiveness, for for love, of course. That's always there for. Uh, integration for manifestation I've been getting heavy inside my head <laughs> right on Glenn well add me on Facebook too you know add my uh, whatever my uh, my uh, the YouTube page they're both on my profile here Yes, I did not mention yes. Might not have mentioned Rush either. Yes and Rush had the two last classic rock albums in 1980. There might have been more since, but uh, there weren't through the 80s, I know that. Fish might have paved the way a little bit, but they did. Fish opened the door. But uh, yeah, 1980, Permanent Waves and Yes put out Drama. And uh, drama had Trevor Horn from the Buggles singing, because John Anderson was with Vangelis at the time. So Trevor Horn sang on this drama album, and uh, he was the one that did Video Killed the Radio Star. And the whole drama album is about how video and MTV showing up just wiped out the music industry, or was going to. And same with Rush. Permanent Waves, that was all about the radio waves, and, you know... The words of the prophets are written on the studio walls in the concert halls. Echoes with the sound of salesmen. Oh, salesmen. And, uh, begin the day with a friendly voice, a companion unobtrusive. Play, that's your, that's, that's your radio song. Play, that's your DJ. Plays that song that's so elusive and the magic music sets your morning mood. Yep. Off on your way, hit the open road. There is magic at your fingers. For the spirit ever lingers on demanding contact in your happy solitude. One likes to believe in the freedom of music. But glittering prizes and endless compromises shatter the illusions of integrity. Yeah. That's what they were talking about, man. Those were the last two classic rock albums, and they, were, they, they just they, they changed. Rush changed their whole way they approached things after that. I fell out of love with them, but they're still incredible. They did that exit stage left, and that was that was their departure. See you later album. <laughs> and then they went into the techno age. 
Yes, did really well coming through the 90s. That that 90125 was just the perfect use of cheesy 80s sounds for the rock uh for the rock uh intention. It really worked out well for them. And that concert was incredible. Well, the 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 80s turned me towards uh People like Michael Hedges and Will Ackerman and Pierre Ben Suzanne and Shadow Facts and Liz Story, the whole Wyndham Hill. I got into George Winston. I listened to all those people. Narada label, Michael Jones. And... Yeah, well, I like it a lot better now, especially the Talking Heads. Talking Heads, they definitely kind of ruled the 80s pretty well, too. A lot of hooks were written, but they weren't explored. You know, they could have had they could have had some really monumental songs in the '80s, and they were just busy writing hook after hook after hook instead of turning them into 12-minute anthologies. <laughs> Thank you. 
smiles through the teardrops He was standing on the moon He said the music's never over No, we just play another tune I'm here, I'm there, I'm doing fine I had to check out, you know I was late And if you'll tend the garden while I'm away I'll clue you in another day Yeah, tend the garden while I'm away Another day, yeah. turn the garden while I'm away. Who wouldn't another day? Turn the garden while I'm away. I couldn't run away. Go give yourselves to fear and pain. Say people don't care enough. Said, don't give yourselves to fear and pain. And say people don't care enough. You know the blessing of change. It's on our backs. Yes, it's us creating love. to twist our fate and if you'll turn the garden while I'm away I'll clue you in another day yeah. turn the garden while I'm away I'll clue you in another day turn the garden while I'm away I'll clue you in another day yeah. turn the garden while I'm away I'll clue you in another day I'm gonna
now. Everybody's so caught up in reaping what we sow. Well, there's love making more love, and there's plenty more to go, you know. We will feed our souls on the fruits of paradise when we let it grow. And if you'll tend the garden while I'm away, I'll bloom another day. Tend the garden while I'm away. Another day, turn the garden while I'm away. You in another day, turn the garden while I'm away. You in another day, turn the garden while I'm away. You in another day, I'm gonna buy and I'm free to do anything. I'm gonna buy and I'll use my new.
down from the sky I see the world and it's spinning round and round And I'm wondering why We all come and we go barely making a sound You know the answers will never be clear And the things that seem real might not be as they appear Suspended on the astral plane where Love is life, it's like the blood in your veins Yeah, flying your ethereal plane Where Love is life, it's like the blood in your veins I say Love is life, it's like the blood in your veins, uh huh. Love is life, it's like the blood in your veins. Love is life, it's like the blood in your veins, you know. I think I'm floating above me, it feels like nothing that I've known. I feel the power of reason reflecting the light into my soul. We will do what we want here, nothing's going to hold us down.
Namaste to everyone and this man who that song was written for two days post-mortem for the physical body anyway. I'm not going to play a song from Nirvana. There's, there's YouTube for that. Please don't ask me to play songs after I just played something that Nirvana could never have produced in the day. I love Dave Grohl, and I'd like him to produce me someday, but please, man. A whole different a whole different place. If you send me a check, I will set up a PayPal. I'm not kidding. I'll learn I'll learn any song people want, but that's not that's not something I'm gonna do right here and now. And you did that all in caps, seriously. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, no, huh? Don't come at me with Nirvana. I was in a band that sounded like Yes or Rush or Genesis or Kansas or Styx or, or uh, you know, Pink Floyd. At the time Nirvana came out and I was crushed that everybody went for this heroin-induced grunge music instead of art rock. If we had stuck it out another couple years, I would have been in on the Dream Theater. It did go back to art rock for a second, but I missed out. I quit my band and went on this other journey. And then Mr. Garcia died, and I wrote that song in 1995, two days after he died, the day after the vigil in the park where the full moon was. So yeah, I just played a 40-minute ode from my heart, completely beautiful in my own piece of expression about a man who had the greatest impact on me. And, I might add, I saw Carlos Santana a few times, but twice I got to meet him. And one time backstage I asked him, was that a picture? Jerry had just died 30 days earlier, within the month. And I saw Santana at, 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 uh, at Lakewood Amphitheater. And he had a picture of some guy with a beard on his amplifier. And I said, was that Jerry you had on your app? He said, no, it's Jesus, but it's the same thing. That man is so devout, he has a picture of Jesus on his amplifier. And he said, but it's the same thing. What's your shoe size? What, what color car do you have? How tall are you? I was just adding arbitrary questions to the mix. I'm a feisty one. And you can ask. And you can, uh, wait, I guess, I don't know, 48. What will you do with that information? Is it going to go on your blog? You could go on Facebook and find out. Do a people search. How old are you? Just to know, but why does it matter? That's a question I've never asked anyone, and I get asked that every time I go live. It's interesting. And it is usually asked by people under 20, I will admit. Your guys are just so curious, you want to know everything. But I don't know what you do with that information in your little heads, in your processing centers. <laughs> I don't mean little. I think, I think. I think many young people are, are probably much brighter and tuned in than a lot of old ones. It's just when the old ones brainwash us eventually and we lose it, hopefully you'll hold on to it. Do you play music? <laughs> That's what I say, Glenn. Do I have a wife or had a one? What the hell is a 14-year-old? What in the fuck? <laughs> Uh, no, I have never had a wife.
and uh, I would love one one day, maybe two or three, all at the same time. And no, I'm not a Mormon. But uh, one would one would be good to begin with. <laughs> Do you have a wife? Do they allow that sort of thing? <laughs> a rocker girl. Yeah, I would definitely need a rocker girl. Some kind of... Somebody with a beautiful, tolerant soul. Because I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> to begin with. Right. Do you play music? They call me Davies. Davies. Da That's a strange name. Davies with a Z. Davies? What I pro Oh, the E guitar, huh? I've seen some kind of little things that are, are like this big. And they got like strings on them. One where the pickup things are and you can get synth sounds and stuff. Well, I didn't even play guitar at 14. I had already given it up. I tried it th at 13 I tried. And uh, I learned how to read much better than I could uh, play. And that got really frustrating. Plus I was... I was a troubled child, and uh, but I did pick it up later, obviously, um, when I was 18, and I dedicated many, many years right away, several hours a day, and if I had actually had the capacity to learn music properly, I would be a different player right now, and if I hadn't taken a huge break, but you gotta play because you love it. Many people can play and make music with it. Uh, the, the market has totally changed in the way that you can do that now. It's almost like you have to be on America's Got Talent or something. But uh, the, the money is in the live shows and the selling of your own merchandise. I might have an Instagram, but I don't remember. Yeah, I think I got an Instagram. Or is it a Tumblr? Yeah, it's an Instagram. I think it's Temple of Awareness. But uh, I had my YouTube or something. SoundCloud. Guitar for 25 years, but primarily bass. Wow. I like how you just bass and guitar the same instrument to you. One just has more strings. Unless you are O'Teal Burbridge. Have you ever heard of O'Teal Burbridge by any chance? Or I know you've heard of Tony Levin. Um, or, uh, or Victor Wooten. Okay. Yeah, you should get a YouTube. Just put it up on YouTube. Hell, it's free. Oh, I gotta turn off my logic and turn it back on. Sweet. Got a three hour and 39 minute recording there. And I start the recording again and I can go another four hours and six minutes before it stops. Um, no, I don't know how to play it. It was one of those kind of first riffs I kind of learned, and yeah, I could, I could play it, but I'm not going to dedicate my attention to that in this moment. But you know, that is one of the top three songs people ask me to play.
So apparently I need to learn it, huh? Yeah, I was there for the Randy Rhodes craze. I didn't get to see him. I was locked up in boys' school at the time. <laughs> not really. I could have escaped through the woods, but that was not really a good option. Um, but, uh, we were outside. But, uh, I got out and... Either I missed a show, or I'm not sure, but I did see Randy, I mean, I did see Ozzy with uh, the next guitar player he had was Jakey Lee. And then he went to Zach Wild. Yeah, it's a great riff. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice, easy, good melody. I'll, I'll play it one day, but I don't want to play it now. I'm in another place. Um... The other song I get asked to play a lot is Sweet Child of Mine. And Nirvana pops up a lot too. Somebody wanted me to play One Direction the other day. I thought that was, that had to be a joke. I, did, I was just laughing. I could play Living After Midnight. That's one of those easy ones to learn, you know. Living After Midnight. It's kind of like Sweet Jane, but Sweet Jane is almost impossible for me to sing and play. Sweet Jane's a Lou Reed song. Steve Hunter was about 20 when he played on that album. And he played the best lead at the beginning of Sweet Jane, Rock and Roll Animal. One of the best rock and roll leads ever. Thank you. I have to pull it out of my face so it puts me to sleep. Like putting a blanket over a bird's cage. tone quite yet. Let's get it.
will sing it another day.
Sitting in your chair won't do You gotta stand up what's wrong with you I feel the weight like never before We must be in the air for our wings to soar In the air for our wings to soar I'm one man and we are many We must communicate and be ready Focus sharp, let our aim be steady As we learn to use our light We learn to use our light We learn to use our
oppressors are destroyed in the meek of the glory. We're living in love and this fact employs me to harness who we truly are. We'll get inspired gazes into the stars. Then we realize we're part of a creative scheme. And if you want unified love, yes, it's yours to dream. We'll see the light of potential shine so far into our own. Life for each boy and girl, a positive life for each boy and girl, a positive life for each boy and are destroyed and the meat get the glory. We're living to love and this fact employs me to harness who we truly are. We'll get inspired days into the stars and we realize we're part of a creative scheme. And if you want unified love, yes, it's yours to dream. We'll see the light of potential shine so far into our own Possibly positive in life for each boy and girl, a positive in life for each boy and girl, a positive in life for each boy and equation at the soul factor but will we see our divination fetch forces painting personal scenes claiming pages of our lives oh how to create one vision using everyone's eyes i said conditioning nurturing environment a complex equation at the soul factor, but will we see our divination? Fates, forces, painting personal scenes, claiming pages of our lives. Oh, how to create one vision using everyone's eyes. Oh, how to create one vision using everyone's eyes. How to create one vision.
nothing wrong with you And how we lift the weight like never before And we take to the air, yes our wings they soar We take to the air and our wings they soar are ready and our focus sharp yes our aim so steady and with the highest intention of love we use our light with the highest intention of love we use our light Namaste. Grazie, Glenn. You know, I, I, <laughs> of all the things to say immediately after that song, that is a song I wrote about, I don't know, I guess I said it in the song. Um, no, no one's ever made the Iggy Pop connection, and if you'll tell me Iggy Pop when he was, you know, 35 or so, that's cool. But he's pretty freaky and scary looking now, I'm, I'm not quite on the Iggy's a good looking dude thing anymore, but he was one of the handsomest fucking freakiest 60s rockers ever. 60s and 70s and 80s. You're right. And I'm not gay or anything, but Iggy Pop was definitely a good looking man. Not that I'm good looking, but I, that, so it is kind of a compliment. But yes, I did see a similarity. I saw this kind of, yeah, I... The fuck? Yeah, definitely. Skinny. And I got long hair. Thin face. And I jump around a lot. And I say crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> he got scary looking. He's not quite as beautiful as he used to be. 
You know, that's what too much heroin will do to you. I don't know what too much is, because I've never been on that bandwagon. It messes up my timing so badly, I can't really, uh... Not that I know what heroin's like, but, uh, like, you know, any opiates, if I took pain pills for any, for any injury I had, anything that was an opiate, Demerol I had to take for wisdom teeth, it messed up my timing so badly, I, I wouldn't take them, I would rather have the pain and keep my timing. But, you know, God bless the people that could do it. Jerry gave, Jerry's probably the best example, and maybe Keith Richards, but Jerry was much more of a, uh, a psychedelic portal. He was able to keep his spirit and his channel about him and still use that stuff. So, you know, to each their own. Sadly, he's dead at 53, five years, you know. Five years for me, I'll be 53. Come on, Jerry, what the fuck? Only way I'm going to be dead is if my plane falls out of the sky. I get in a wreck. A tree falls on me while I'm walking down the street on a sunny day. I don't know what the hell happens. Um, oh, I wrote that song immediately. It was just boom. But putting it together was kind of wild, yeah. And every time I do put it together, it comes out differently. That was that was unique. I finally learned a way that I like it to go according to the stuff that I have with me. I've never played that live with like a a band or in front of people. This is this is my uh, training ground. <laughs> I definitely will. It'll make it'll make a sound. I I'll, I'll hear it. I'll hear my bones crunch underneath it. And I will say it's been a good life. Time to go. Anna, thank you, by the way, for the beautiful remark. I haven't spoken to you enough. I didn't even, you're up really late. I didn't even know if you were still hanging out. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. You are beautiful, too. Yes, you. That Anna M. The one that said I was beautiful. Yeah, uh, you know, I've never been to the other side that much with uh, too many dead people that I can see and feel. And, but I have, actually, you know, uh, like Jesus came on my stage one time. He stood on my stage while I was playing in front of a really large house. I hope I play for that many people, for sure. And I've been, you know, Christ consciousness is a beautiful thing. It doesn't seem to have much to do with the whole other part of the Bible, the whole First Testament, and same thing as Buddha consciousness, or Zen consciousness, Tao consciousness, same thing as uh, finding our personal meditative zone, that place where you function the best, where you think the most clearly, where you have the kindest thoughts, try to be there as often as possible. And if you have moments of enlightenment, try to stretch those moments out longer because we seem to be intermittently enlightened and then we kind of go back to sleep. I'll be shouting at my computer or some idiot on the road that's driving as I just used the word idiot. They're not necessarily an idiot. They're just driving poorly according to what I expect of them. Which is a far different thing. Because therein I have an expectation. But I do like people to drive within the law and not endanger me. <laughs> yeah, Jim Morrison, of course. What other Jim is there? Oh, Jim Croce. Jim Croce was great, but he ain't quite Jim Morrison. But Jim Croce was... In my opinion, probably a better songwriter. Jim Morrison wrote better poetry, probably. 
<laughs> I remember asking my mom when I heard Jim Croce died. He was I was like 7 or something and he was he had he was all over the radio three or four different songs at once and and uh, she said he died in a plane crash. And I said, <laughs> a plane crash? What's a plane? Just a plain old crash, not like a special <laughs> crash. <laughs> she had to explain it was an airplane crash. I was like, oh, that's terrible. You know, he did that too. He was already super famous at that point. His, his, his record had gone gold. But he had obligations to do like... Uh, high school proms and graduations and stuff and he honored all all the gigs that he had until you know he got he had the bigger paying ones also at the same time but he had these other obligations and he flew into some little high school and he did their graduation and then his and, and he flew it was literally like flying out on the football field is what the plane was taking off and there wasn't enough uh there wasn't enough distance and they caught the trees leaving the school after the gig he played the show and he caught the trees and died that night but man it's really sad when the when the fucking amazing ones go he was a badass and of course Jimi hendrix but man should I be taking a break yet? Yeah, it's four minutes and four hours and 32 minutes. I guess that's long enough for a break. Very good, Anna. You stretched and you got caught up in my music, huh? Yeah, I saw the last time I saw you type anything was when I was playing the Judas Priest. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Most of Led Zeppelin didn't die, just 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 that one drummer guy, John Bonham. Aw, thank you, Anna. That's a really strange thing to say. I appreciate that remark. I do say that about people sometimes. I'll say, you look like two guys had a baby, or these particular two guys, but I've never heard Arnold Schwarzenegger. That bothers me. Yeah, no. D. Snyder? I don't know who J.J. is from Twisted Sister, but there's D. Snyder. But no, you don't have to go there. Is this suddenly, is this suddenly comedy night? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I didn't realize J.J. died from Twisted Sister. Come on, feel the noise. Girls, rock your boys. We'll get wild, wild, wild. Oh, wow, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, I was singing Quiet Riot, wasn't I? I thought about it. I remember Dee Snyder telling a story how he did a stage dive one time at some little redneck place in a... In Massachusetts of all places, but it was rednecks in Massachusetts, and he and he did a stage dive, and everybody jumped out of the way, and he landed right on his face on the floor. Well, 
Well, I'm 48, and the 70s is a really big thing to me. But I was there for all of the 80s, and I heard way too many songs. I couldn't escape it. MTV melted my brain. I graduated in 84. Um, Kiss rocks. They go to a certain level of rock and roll. But, you know, that people were either really hardcore Kiss fans or not, and I was not. But I did like, uh, I had rock and roll over, and I heard the double platinum thing. But I was more into art rock. It's more into King Crimson, Jethro Tull, yes, Pink Floyd, Genesis, Moody Blues. Yeah, people ask me to play Black Veil Brides already a couple different times. Yeah, there you go, Joel. The 60s was a good one. No, but I have I saw Motorhead. Actually, I saw LA Guns. I didn't see Motorhead. But LA Guns was pretty good. I helped them move their equipment until I accidentally loaded a, the gear, some someone's gear on the wrong truck. Then I decided I would depart, but I just snuck right backstage and started helping out. In a, at a place called the Limelight in New York City, man. Really nice little club. I was all dressed up, not like a metalhead or a roadie. Out on the town, all by myself in New York City. Wandered into an L.A. gun show, ended up backstage helping them move equipment. <laughs> I live in Georgia. I don't have to be a Leonard Skinner fan. I'm going to hear it all the time anyway. Yeah, I do think they're great, though. You know, they got a lot of good songs. Those boys could write some hits. They had some plane trouble, too, didn't they? <laughs> uh, I remember my dad one time I was uh, I went in a store for some reason he he was he was uh sitting in the car listening to the radio and I come out of this store and he was waiting for me and he had he had Freebird cranked up the ending the, the the guitar lead and he's like just jamming out in the car he's like have you ever heard this man <laughs> I just laugh. Oh. Well, you know, tiny bars aren't necessarily disappointing. They're quaint, they're comfy, they're cozy. You get a really good personal view of the people. I went to CBGB's and I think it's closed down now. Man, the East Village, that place was some fun. So was drag racing the taxi cabs from red light to red light.
a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift and the baffled key. But you needed truth And you saw her bathing on the roof Her beauty in the moonlight over through you Well, she tied you to her kitchen chair She cut your throat and she broke your chair
to me, do ya? Remember when I moved in you and the holy dove was moving too? And every breath we drew was high. Somebody who outdo you well, It's not a cry that you hear at night No, it's not somebody who's seen the light It's a cold And it's a broken hallelujah
another little break because hallelujah namaste thank you for participating in that little Easter meditation 959 time to shut my window and quit freaking the neighbors out Oh my god, it's Easter. Does he hold no day sacred? I'm playing a hundred straight days. My neighbors must think I'm crazy, but they probably always have. Is anybody chatting in the room anymore? I don't see anything happening. Are you all in a trance? Did I just wake you up, Anna? Did you now cut me off and I don't even know it? These and many more questions I would love answers to. So, Joel, you brought your wife in, and Marjorie likes it a lot, too, or is that your daughter? Not many daughters are named Marjorie, but you could be. You're somebody's daughter. Thank you for being with me, Anna. So, yeah, someone asked if that was a Jeff Buckley version. I don't know. That was my version. Um, Leonard Cohen wrote it. Jeff Buckley did an amazing job on it, and I try not to watch either of those videos because I don't. I, I just I've got my own feeling for it. But the thing is, holding those first notes in that song, I got a head rush and forgot the whole rhythm to it. So I just kind of stopped playing, and kept singing, and tried to stay standing up. I hold a lot of long notes, and the breathing will just make me space. I didn't space completely, but I spaced enough to lose the chords. Plus, that progression still still really gives me a hard time. Ah, but I made it through. And thank you for being with me still. I'm sorry I kept you awake. It's because I was singing so loudly, wasn't it? And yes, Joel, I have played in a band. A couple of them. Three. So we are at the five hour mark, and it feels like seven. But I'm not done yet. I still feel something. There's like eight people apparently watching me. Did I just bring you guys all out of your trances? So there's Hunter and Toby still in here somewhere, and my dad's still watching. Wow, cool. Thanks, Dad. And Marjorie Morris is here, but the other Morris is now gone. But, all right, that's enough of looking at people who might be watching me. Thanks, Hunter. Still trying to hydrate a little bit. Oh, my Lord. That one took it out of me a little bit. Hallelujah always does. I sang pretty high. I almost hit some of those notes. And I definitely didn't hit some of those notes. But we do what we can. I did something pretty weird with it. I always do. But one day I'll, one day I'll have my formula for it. It's a really cool song. It deserves, it deserves you to sing your lungs out or you shouldn't really be singing it. That's all there is to it. <laughs> there are certain songs like that that I, I won't even sing if I don't have that kind of energy. And that's one of them. You know, Leonard Cohen got away with not. But he does kind of sing everything like The World's Ending. Tom Waits did too. Does. So that's my only Leonard Cohen song. And I decided to learn that one day to uh, throw down with another friend of mine who does another version of Hallelujah, and he died before I got to do that. He does a different Hallelujah, the Martin Sexton version. And 
and now I think I'm going to learn that one. Not now, but I will. So yeah, I'm glad. So what I pictured, Marjorie, was this Joel Morris cat talking to me and asking me if that was hallelujah and all. And then he says, hey, honey, check this out. And then you show up. And I'm like, right on. That's really cool. Is that what happened? <laughs> Y'all were... I wish I knew more Jeff Buckley or Leonard Cohen, but uh, I may. I may one day. I'm fighting. I've got apple chunks in my tea, and I'm fighting to keep the apple chunks out from getting in the straw. I know, I know. Too much information. But seriously, when was the last time you got a five hour concert? My camcorder has another two hours on it. And then I'll have to, oh, I have another hour on another camcorder sitting next to it. Because I am recording all this on Logic in eight tracks, and on an and on an additional camera. Yep, there it is. Sweet. I have it hidden. It's a '77 Les Paul, and it was supposed to be probably painted or something hideous that someone didn't want to do to this beautiful finish which was more beautiful probably in 1977 before I got a hold of it. All right. Thank you, Anna. Now I'm going to play more Sleepy Time music. That'll be fun. I'll work with some digital delays. Bouncy, soft, and pretty. But when I go off the air... I can't be responsible for who you end up listening to instead because it just immediately dumps you onto someone else's page. But they'll probably just be sitting there talking like I am. I just had someone work on the guitar and... Yeah, I think he said I think he said it was mahogany. It weighs 20 pounds. This thing is so heavy. I don't know if I'm stronger or weaker because of it, but she's a little of both. Love to you too, Anna. Sweet, beautiful dreams. If you decide to astral travel or come visit, I'll say hello. Give me some notes to play. So let's go with this time that we're on five fourteen. Times eight is fourteen times eight. Oh, that's on. That's forty-one. Actually, that's thirty-two. So that's twelve. Forty-nine, twelve. I mean, forty-one, twelve. Somewhere about here. And we'll have my digital delays and time working together. This is a science. It ain't rocket science, but it is when you're trying to play. Think of words. I'm not thinking of words when I'm doing this. So let's go into a sleepy time key. I've been in a lot of A today. 
And uh, sleepy time key, let's go with the third eye, back into D.
glad you guys are enjoying yourselves. I think my back must take a break. But that was sleepy music for Anna, who, in Sweden, finally decided to go to bed at like 3 o'clock in the morning for her. Or maybe 4. <coughs> but I, uh... Man, thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. Hello, Miranda. Much, much, a lot of fun. Wonderfulness. Wow. Yeah, kind of. Kind of tranced me out. I think I played like an hour and a half straight at that point there. Somewhere near there. It felt like it anyway. No, probably just an hour. 50 minutes or an hour, that little jam was. I hope Anna finally made it to sleep. Right on. Yeah, thank you. I think I saw you come in and, like, fan me. I appreciate that. Sunlight. Great name. Sun's a beautiful thing. Miranda, what did I do today? I played guitar for the last six hours and 34 minutes. And then I spent like three hours before that getting ready to play guitar. I did mow the lawn. That was my Easter present to the neighbors and my father. Yeah, thanks for thanks for feeding me some of the energy for that journey. I'm a full believer in the in the power of uh, positive enforcement. Energetically, it comes from uh, wherever you are to me. You're focusing your attention on me, and I'm feeling it. That's the way all healers work. When you give all your attention to someone, they can get flashes of intuition and empathy, and they really can. Oh, it's so much easier to tell people how to live a great life than it is to actually live one. But, uh, you know, that's what, that's what we do. Right on. Well, I hope you bought nice things and had great company. And when you decide to listen back to this video, you have six hours to look forward to so far. Well, more like five. Five and a half. Yeah, I guess it's, well, no, five hours and 45 minutes. I don't know, I probably, I probably talked away 30 minutes at least. I've only taken like two breaks though. This is my second one. How do I go back to what? Where am I going back to? From the journey that I was just on, how do I continue playing after that? My head is swimming around, I'll tell you what, that was, that was kind of crazy. At one point I felt myself in the sleep trance with Anna, I had to like pull myself back, wake up and play something a little more active. Yeah, I don't know what, how do you go back to what? You wrote, how do you go back? And it might have been because I said something that, Oh, how do I, you can't, you can't go back and listen to this video. I see what you're saying. No, you can do that when I'm done and you can do that when I post it on, uh, on YouTube. All these videos are on YouTube. Have you not been to my YouTube page? If you go to my profile when I'm not online, I don't know what you see when I'm online, 
But if you go to my profile when I'm not online, you'll see a, a YouTube link. And uh, uh, every one of my videos go up on YouTube within about an hour of me stopping here. And then I post them on Facebook and when they're finally loaded up on YouTube. And I post them on five different Twitter pages at this moment. But yesterday's, you can listen to all of yesterday's if you go to YouTube. But not today's, not till I'm done. Oh, glad you enjoyed it, Glenn. Yeah, you took off and then you came back, huh? And thank you, Sadie Hightower, for becoming a fan. And hello, Sadie Hightower. I'm sorry your ear is killing you. I hope it's not my music. I'll play some healing music for your ear next. I might need to grab a bite to eat or some, some beverage. Earth Snake, that's a great name too. Got a fan, someone like Earth Snake. Oh, man. Yeah, I've got to eat dinner. It's already made for me. It's just sitting in the uh, oven. I might want to grab a bite. My dad was watching me earlier and actually uh, told me that there was a frittata in the oven, a kale frittata even. I think I can totally deal with some of that about now and get some water. So what I'll do is play, uh, I know what I can do. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't my music that it was killing your ear. Okay, well, yeah, I can try to play some healing music for your ear, like I said. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's still watching. He's probably sleeping. We're getting close to it. Let's see. Where's my downloads? Holy cow. Do this. Some of that. Oh, man. Wow, it won't let the sound work. It won't turn the sound up. Strange. Oh well, I was going to let y'all listen to me from yesterday. But it won't play on this player. Hope there is sound. I think there is. Yeah, I listened to it. It was there. But let's see if I can open it in something else. Maybe it'll play in... in uh, it's a good pick. Oh, yep. It's gonna What's play up, there. people? Sorry. Is that loud? Can you hear that okay? Alright, there we go. I'll turn it down now. Oh yeah, I was doing I was doing some home stuff. Alright, well I'll be right back.
Okay, sorry about all that noise. Did that sound okay? <laughs> oh, that was that was really loud in the headphones, huh? Man, I had it turned down. Sorry about that. I should have left it on, but uh That was yesterday. You can go back and listen to that on YouTube. Travel off into the uh, distance again. So here's the frittata. I didn't ask if there was any real cheese in there or not, but there is. I know there's a veggie cheese. Kale and eggs. And, mm hmm. Yeah, I haven't gotten to eating in the last seven hours. Mm hmm. I wouldn't have been able to cook this if I hadn't been I mean so fortunately my dad did my dad even sent my mom a link today I hope I didn't use much profanity It is really yummy. It was two stacks, and I used a plate way too small, so I had to put it on top of the other one. So far, no, no catastrophes. Mmm, I'm so hungry, though. Last time I ate was like uh, 6.30 in the morning. Oh no, I had a grapefruit. I had a grapefruit like around one o'clock maybe. It might be ricotta. It's pretty damn good. But he usually, it tastes like it must be real cheese. It just tastes too good. Onions and all kind of stuff. So I still have seven viewers after almost the whole omelet. So what song should I do next? Mm. 
It really is. Well, my dad's not online anymore. Or he might type it in. I don't think he has a recipe for this. There's some veggie sausage in it, too, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I saved you a bite. Might be a couple bites. Mm. It is pretty fucking good. You'd love it. My dad is full-blooded Italian, and his mother was definitely the best red sauce maker in the whole family of all the sisters. And my grandmother's red sauce was the uh, literally the standard for all the women when they would talk about was it as good as Mary's or not. So I grew up pretty spoiled. as far as Italian food goes. Mm. So I'm half Italian, and I can cook pretty damn well too, but I've never made a frittata. I won't make you suffer anymore. Wow. Half Italian and half like Appalachian Welsh. So I don't even know what them people are. There's some. They kind of stayed Welsh though. All my li I've got like four last names I can track down on my mother's side. And they're all. They're all like Wales ish. Let's see. Edwards, Loy, Graham. And, uh, fuck, I forget. There's a, there's a fourth, there's a fourth one, too. Edward, Deloy, Graham, and Jones. Jones is, that narrows it down. <coughs> So I've got an hour left on my cam, and then another hour on my other cam. Where is my other cam? I should get it ready for when this one dies. There it is. Oh, what did you go do, Miranda? I didn't know you left, but thank you for coming back. I came back and I just ate an entire frittata, a whole pound of eggs, cheese, and kale. <laughs> Now I'm going to do jumping jacks. 
Yeah, I am lucky. And I'm using my opportunity to play as much music as I can, get the hell out of the house and make some money with my music. Trying to make it all second nature. So I can play a song in my sleep. <clears throat> I think I got the jam thing down. It's those songs that give me a hard time. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do ya? But it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift. <clears throat> and the baffled king composing, hallelujah. One day I'll get that song right. I did that song earlier. You have that to look forward to. The pinched harmonics, huh? What, on the last journey I played musically when I played my guitar earlier, or what I just sang? Because my voice is pretty pitched, all right. <clears throat> Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. Well, she tied you to her kitchen chair. Yeah, I like to sing that one like Freddie Mercury. I think Freddie would have done a pretty good job with that song. Did I just chop your ear off? How did I do that? Oh, because it hurts? I'm sorry. I'm not going to chop your ear off. You're going to have to find someone else to do that. That sounds really messy, and I'm averse to that kind of stuff.
are right back where they started Maybe live all our lives just to it again Put fear to rest now Doing my best to live and learn by example Well, let me hear it
I'm glad it's a great escape, Sunlight. I thought of you when I saw your name, because I, I talk about the sunshine in that song. I do have a song. It sounds like Here Comes the Sun. It's, all, it's about a sunrise, but I'm not really happy with that song. i got to rework it a little bit. Almost fell asleep. I'm sorry, I stopped and woke you up. I'm sorry, some, something just seemed long enough about that song. I had to switch cameras in the middle of it. My camera cut off sooner than I thought. So I've got about another hour to go, and uh, I don't even know if I'll make it that far. <laughs> the levitation into another existence. You need to add me on Facebook. I think you'll like some of my postings. I have like four sites, but I have a I have a 432 hertz frequency awareness site, and I have my music mosaic site, and I also have a YouTube, and I post all my videos from YouTube on my Facebook, and I post alerts when I'm going to play here on Facebook. <laughs> My site at YouTube is Astral Music Man. And if you go to Matthew Barbro in my playlist, you'll see nothing but all my music mosaics in order. All the way back to last February.
Spirit of love I came. I was looking up from down one day. Imaginary clouds had blown away. My heart could feel my soul. It knew the Spirit of love had carried me through. I used to be sure of so much more till the hunger for truth kicked open the door. Now I'm sure I'll never know it best I'm gonna help this garden to grow. And I'm trying to read all of destiny's signs. And every moment contains its own gold mines. And the spiraling path always leads us to bliss. Light bestows her blessed kiss.
stone gold mines And the spiraling path will always lead us to bliss
Getting a little painful over here. <laughs> but it's a beautiful pain. And I have to take this guitar off my neck because it weighs 20 pounds. Oh, Lord. I might be nearing the end of my run here, people. I don't know if I can keep up with old ukulele Crayley, but I do have 58 straight days of this right now. So I think ukulele's got a little catching up to do, in my opinion. And Rex, I do use distortion, but I use it however I want and whenever I want. But thank you for fanning me, and thank you for wanting me to play distortion. Yeah, you know, good music does charge me up, too, for a long time to come. And hanging out with good friends and good people and people that share my beautiful uh, paradigm, my outlook on life. Makes me all supercharged to go and deal with all the zombies. But yeah, you can go back and listen to the other four hours that you weren't here for. And then you can go and listen to, like, the other hundred videos I've put up in the last 58 days. Would have been 58 videos, but you now kind of breaks them up sometimes accidentally. So why do I always get more people in here whenever I quit playing guitar? People just want to hear what I sound like when I talk, and then they click out of here. Yeah, I appreciate you, too, uh... Is it your name, Pe Pekin, or something like that? What the hell is your name? Something like that. You have an interesting name. And you made brownies. And you didn't send me any. I hope they were good. You made those yesterday. Oh, Paladin. Paladin? Oh, Palindrome is a, the, th the same forward as it is backwards. So Paladin, let's see. Your name means like where the heart is or where the home is? Does it have anything to do with a home? Oh, thank you for the Corona, Marjorie. I could really use it about now. I've got six beers downstairs. I might drink one tonight. I'm sorry. I've got like four beers, but I've had them for six months. That's how little I drink. No, I've gone out and thrown back a few tequilas, but uh, I drink in self-defense when I'm out in public and people are drinking, but otherwise I don't have any need for it. It makes me sleepy, but I might could use a little sleep tonight. I'm going to put on a show tomorrow. Yeah, I'm doing 100 straight days, so I've got like 42 more days or something to go. I'll have to figure it out. And then I'm going to go back and see if I have anything to mix down from my logic recordings. Perhaps there'll be a jam or two that I can mix down for different mediums, different producers. Different people with different ideas. And it is 1.05 for me. And I started playing today at four in the afternoon. Oh, really? Paladin is one of the 16 nights. Were there 16 nights? I thought there were just 12. They're kind of in pain. Yeah, this finger's feeling some damage. There's a couple times I was going for stuff. 
I just can't put what I want to into the notes anymore. It's starting to get a little too painful. So I'll give it up for now. <laughs> I thought it was, I don't know, 12 nights in the round tables. 12's been that number through history, but I don't know where the 16 comes from. It's cool. You know, there could have been four extra ones, and that was a paladin. One of them was. But no, that that name does sound familiar. It does. So that's a, you're the first paladin I've met. I don't think I was one of those knights of the round table. Not that much into fighting. I will when I have to, but you're going to have to come find me because I'm going to be hanging out with, like, some squirrels and the deer Picking some figs and playing my loot. <laughs> Fuck a bunch of round table shit. But that is noble. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Blues Mate. <laughs> I am the truest guitarist on here. Nobody can match up in your opinion. Well, I know some really good players, but... You know, I'm really trying to trust in my own brand of expression. And, you know, Dylan wasn't the most polished person in the world, but he sure did always have heart and always does when he plays. Thank you, Miranda. I'm sorry I'm talking your ear off now, and I do hope your ear heals. I was playing healing music for your ear. I was hoping the distortion wasn't, wasn't too much for your ear, actually. Right on, Elijah. What else is there to play? Yeah, Glenn, add me at Facebook or YouTube. Astral Music Man at YouTube. Temple of Awareness at SoundCloud. Facebook. Matthew Barbaro. Music Mosaics. My name's not coming up with Music Mosaics. There's these other people that pop up, and it's not right. I have, like, more Music Mosaics in the last couple months than any other music mosaic but uh, it's cool I do have the website one of them but yeah Jet, that sounds like some good music there Elijah right on Glenn I'm glad I'm glad I could uh, I'm glad I could match some of your tastes I'll learn more songs I want to learn yes and you and I I think that I have a 12 string over there in the background you can see you can see the case this is a 12 string. I haven't busted it out yet. I need to pick up a mic. I lost a mic at a gig somewhere, and someone told me they had it. I just met him by accident on the street last week, and he's, he's like, dude, I got your mic. He ground scored it, he said, at, after the event. Apparently I left it there, no telling how long. I do know I went back like a week later if not more than that, and found another mic there and a stand from something else that I'd left at this gig because it was dark and I didn't see the stand. And, and the other mic I found was worth even more. Unbelievable, man. Oh, right on. Oh, yeah. Steve Hillage changed my life. And I had been, I was a record collector when I found Steve Hillage. But uh, I had been seeing his albums for like a couple of years. But he looked like an Eric Clapton wannabe on the album that I remembered seeing, which was called Motivation Radio. And he's standing in front of a satellite tower with like a Stratocaster. And he's got this finely, neatly trimmed beard. And he looks like a Clapton wannabe, kind of. So I didn't buy his album. I thought it was just some half-assed blues or something. And then when I did finally buy that album, I was blown away. And I went back to the record store maybe that day, and I bought everything else he had. <laughs> everything I could find. Steve Mihalich blew my mind. But yeah, I like a lot of Gong, too, for the same reason. They get a little weird. 
Gong is almost like the uh, the British Frank Zappa with a little bit more psychedelic drug influence. Zappa wasn't as druggy. But every bit is tight. Really cool stuff. Elijah, listen to Gong and Steve Hillage. We're not kidding. That stuff will blow your mind. Because these people were... Steve Hillage was the grandfather of, like, rave music. And then there's this band called Osric Tentacles that took his grooves. It's basically these medieval, these mid-eastern kind of grooves. The, and, uh, and, and you get these really minor scales, and, and you can picture, you know, camels and sheiks and at least desert or palm trees. And uh, that's where all the really, really good psychedelic snake charming kind of music comes from. People tapped into that. When rap got good, it was because of that. They were jumping on those same ideas. Uh, gangster, what was it, like Gangster in Paradise? And, or Gangster's Paradise, that was it. And uh, they took on that, and uh, so, did, so did Eminem. When Eminem got big, he was using these Mid-Eastern scales. Anyway, rap got a hold of this rave music, and that's what, ter that's what, be that's what is now this EDM thing. This total mix of, of rap and rave with a whole a whole lot more uh, sound invention since then. When it, but uh, Steve Hillage invented this stuff by tweaking these diodes way back then, and uh, you know Pierre Molin. I, I imagine all those people were, and Tangerine Dream was doing stuff, but Steve Hillage was doing it with a guitar, and he was using tape loops. Like I use digital delays, he had tape loops strung out for like eight feet on this machine on a stage. And uh, so they would play with these tape loops and, and they got these sounds of these oscillating frequencies way back in like 73, 74. Madonna used it in Ray of Light and she made a bajillion dollars on that song and Ray of Light's just a great song because of the oscillating frequencies. Anyway. That's what Steve Hillage was really good for. And a band called Osric, O-Z-R-I-C, Tentacles. They're almost solely instrumental. And they're still around today. They're British. But they were doing it in the mid to late 80s. Yeah, I'm familiar with Moby Grape, for sure. And Osric Tentacles has about 14 albums. All their song titles they make up. Their words they make up. They fucking make up words. <laughs> like nothing is a real word in any of their song titles. Even their name is barely a word. I don't know what the hell that is. But, uh, yeah, those guys will blow your mind. You'll beg to hear an acoustic guitar after a couple hours of that shit, but they will electronically blow your mind. And that's really, these are the, they're the fathers of rave. Steve Hill is the grandfather. And there's a couple other people around that are less known, but Steve Hillage got the most known who was doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've heard of Yum Yum Tree, for sure. And there's another band like a Porcupine Tree, I mean. I think you're mixing two people. One is Porcupine Tree and the other one is Yum Yum something. <laughs> oh is yum yum tree the name of an osric tentacle song or is that a band i'm getting all uh, confused now but uh or is that a moby grape song oh it's an album yeah yum yum is an album by osric okay Oh, man, I've got some really good live recordings of those guys. They're still throwing down. I think the guitarist's wife is the bass player sometimes, and she throws the hell down. The guitar player looks like, you know, he uh, missed out on the gigs for Dio and, and uh, Ozzy back in the day, and he, he, totally, he totally is a metalhead. He will shred your face off, and how those guys can play that music with those lights. They have... They can usually only use a v small portion of their lights because they'll blow out the amps in the theaters they go to. But they use strobes that will put an epileptic down. And they play for like four hours. I literally, they had an 
they had an outdoor place where I saw him, fortunately. It was indoors to see him, but there was an outdoor smoking area, and I had to go sit outside just because my head was going to explode. Dude, Voyage 34. Oh, that's, a, that's an Osric song? I don't know the song names, man. Every one of them just kind of spins my head. And that's funny, too, when you're watching them, the crowd all knows that they've changed songs, and I'm still, like, going... I hear music and feel music in kind of a different way than <laughs> some people, I think. But, uh, like the dead, too, I couldn't follow those guys around. Watching them three times in a row would spin my head for a whole year. I'd, I'd go and see them in, in another city now and then, Charlotte or something, but I saw them in, a. Maryland once too. But just in Atlanta, I saw them like 22 times, Atlanta and Charlotte and Maryland, and then I saw Jerry Band in Hampton and in Richmond. And Jerry Garcia Band made the dead look like posers. There was so no pretension in the Jerry Garcia Band. This is him and Merle Saunders. Melvin Seals was the guy that played in the Jerry Garcia band that I saw, and uh, Melvin was a badass too. But there was a Shining Star they did that's up on my YouTube. It's the best Shining Star ever in the world, and it is the best Jerry Shining Star. There's another Shining Star he did in Hampton a couple years earlier or something, but it wasn't like this one. 93 Shining Star, November... 19th, I think. It's on my YouTube. It's really, really worth listening to. Yeah, I like a lot of different Zappa. Man, his whole album, Francesco Zappa, is incredible. Fucking Shut Up, or Joe's Garage is just unbelievable. Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, Baby Snakes. Uh, Chunga's Revenge, I love. It's really old. Transylvania Boogie is... <laughs> Wicked guitar solo in that song. Really woke me up one day listening to that. Uh, Miles Davis when he had Mike Stern. Schofield was pretty good too. But uh, Mike Stern, that woke me up one time. After Miles Davis died, they were playing him for like a, a week straight, literally, on, on the jazz radio station in Atlanta. And I was recording it. I'd sleep putting in tapes in the tape deck, waking up, flipping the tape, waking up, putting in another tape, waking up, flipping it. But I, I was hearing a Mike Stern guitar solo in a song called Fat Time off of an album called Man With The Horn. And there's some live versions of him doing that. As a matter of fact, they did it on Saturday Night Live. But that solo woke me up. It is the wickedest solo. It is the expression of heroin addiction and trying to get away from it. That's what it sounded like to me. It's just wicked cool. And that's the same kind of feeling that uh, Shockwave has on Never Say Die, a song called, uh, uh, I think it's called Shockwave, yeah, or something like that. Um, um, or Over to You. No, it's, I think it's Shockwave. But, uh, and uh, Chunga's Revenge. And that song on the Sabbath album, it sounds like, uh, it kind of sounds like you're standing above a grave or not even above a grave, but it's like an arm reaches up and tries to pull you into the ground and you're fighting to get away. <laughs> that's, the, that's the feeling Tony Iommi evokes. It's just, I love people with feeling. Steve Morris is my favorite light light shredder he's got so much light around him Jimmy Herring is just an unbelievable soul that plays music with uh, Panic now he used to play with the dead and he does sometimes again I don't know if he's playing up in Chicago or not but he's uh, he was my teacher so I definitely dig on some Jimmy Herring I 
I only took a quarter of classes from him because he quit school to join a band, and I quit because he quit. And then I uh, watched his band many, 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 many times, which was my education. And I got to party. Okay, so what am I doing? I see. This is the Sabbath song. Jimmy Herring taught me. put this on YouTube, I'm going to get a third party violation. <laughs> I'm coming to California soon. Here's the solo, listen to this. Can you hear the music okay? Is the shit, brother. It's one of the best leads ever. And now listen to this. Overdrive. Ending is totally cool too. This is 
best Sabbath album in my opinion. It's just so dynamic. Yeah, I tried to keep that volume relatively low, but uh, <laughs> that song, you know, I don't listen to much Sabbath, but I have. That was some just, that was, that album, it's like the best garage recording ever made. It's called Never Say Die, and I'm uh, probably going to be all over California. I'm going to Colorado, too, but I... I I'm going to play meditative music in L.A. where there's a bunch of rich, stressed out artist industry folks that are looking for alternative therapy and I'm going to be making individual music mosaics for people. 90 minutes to two hours of music specifically played in their presence with their energy according to what types of sounds they respond best to, what, what style of music, if I can reproduce that, and using as many different MIDI tools and software stuff that I can. Take it home, mix it down, take it to wherever I am, and mix it down and give them a copy. And me and my light worker Reiki goddess woman, who is yet to show up in this project, will uh, put the people at ease and totally give them a nice yin yang balanced healing session and then they'll get a recording to listen to for however long they want whenever they want to take them to their little happy meditative place so uh sacramento sounds great that's in between la and san francisco and sacramento's next to oakland and oakland's next to I know how that works. I've been to Sacramento, but on my way from uh, Oakland to uh, Mendocino, I hung out in Mendocino for about six weeks and had a blast. That was back in 2001. As the towers fell, I was in Mendocino. I went out there like on a Friday, and Monday the towers came down. Wow, you live out in the boonies and Sacramento's the only place you can go to? That's like the nearest town or something? Oh, wow. Yeah, California's a big place, man. Definitely is. Yeah, I just I just think that there's a bunch of people that are really into the alternative uh, industry. It's alternative music industry and stuff. Uh, therapy, I mean. And they're in movie and music and arts, and they like good music. Many of them do. And... Uh, in San Francisco, I could do okay, but I I don't know. I think, you know, a lot of those people already are artists. And, and in L.A., they're not necessarily a lot. There's a lot more wannabes. But I, I think there's more money in L.A. and a more inexhaustible supply of people that would have me for $2,500 and my assistant create a music mosaic for them to listen to whenever they want forevermore and if they want exclusive rights they can have that too for more money but uh yeah and then i won't be posting it on youtube or selling it to the general electric or whatever the hell wants to use it for a commercial or a soundtrack or make a cd out of it but i will listen to it myself
But uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'd like to do. And right now, I'm I'm on my 58th day, or so. Let's see, what is today? The sixth? Yeah. No, I'm on my 59th day of a hundred straight days of recording. So uh, I've got 41 more to go, and then I, maybe I'll have some stuff to mix down, and I will be. Sending out my links and my letters and my business proposals to people all over California and wherever. But I just want to go where that, that healing vibe is. Europe seems to be a really, really interested place. Of course, I play in the middle of the night, so there's like Europeans awake in the morning and stuff. But uh, still, a lot of Europeans really dig it. But it's not for everybody. But uh, I want to work in. I want to work in a lot more uh, 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 software stuff and be able to syncopate drums and stuff with my delays and 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 uh, far out kind of drums, oscillating frequencies. You know. So I'd love to be able to pay a really good engineer. And if one could hear me and hear that potential, um, might get Steve Hillage to to do me one day. I haven't I haven't met him personally, but I talked to him on Twitter. But <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. And he's got a band now called System Seven. And he's totally running the, the EDM scene. Oh, he and his wife throw down. They make some beautiful music. All trancy and they do it with iPads and stuff. He's all techno with it. <laughs> I will. I'll say hi for the blues mate in California. You can add him on Twitter and just think of something really important to say, otherwise you'll be wasting his time, but he'll reply to you. Yeah, he's a god to me, man. I really, I was just so, so blown away. His music definitely changed a lot of how I play guitar. What am I waiting for? Oh, okay. Yeah, just uh, just write in 140 characters how much his music means to you, and he'll appreciate that. And ask him if he's got plans to come to California. Yeah, ask him if he's got plans to come to California. Tell him how much his music means to you in 140 characters or less. That's a hello, and maybe he'll respond and maybe not. And if you ask him a direct question, puts him on the spot. But he's a busy man, but... He does have time for his fans who love him. But, but I think I'm going to get out of here. I'm going back up to the room and fanning a few people, but I want to go. It's in my heart to leave.
But I do want to chat sometime. I like going back and reading some of the chat, which I don't necessarily get able to read when I'm playing. Funny, some people come in here and it's like, play some A7X or some Godsmack or some blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Do I have any pedals? Hell yeah, I got pedals. There's a loop station. There's two Ernie Ball pedals. I got a wah pedal. And I have a whole effects, I have a whole effects pedal down here that you can't really see too much of. But uh, the, uh, the Boss GT8 guitar processor. I play through two Lexicon PCM42 digital delays. Like 1987 issue. It's been nice talking to you too, Elijah. I'll catch you jamming sometime. And the, the, the PCM 42s I saw Steve Morris playing, and I asked him, What the hell is that you're playing through, man? That sounds great. My delays don't sound like that. And he told me. And he told me where I could buy them in Atlanta, a really specialty high end music gear store. And I walked in there asking for one of them things, and they had one, and I went home, and I played with it. And I realized when you're using a long delay, it was like 2.4 seconds. When you put it on hold, it was 4.8 seconds, actually. When you put it on hold, it's dry. You don't have another delay tone. It's only got one delay. So if you put it on repeat hold, then you don't have any more delay tones. So I went out, and I had to buy another delay so I could have a delay when I, to play over my repeat hold delay so I used repeat hold until about a year ago when I started using my loop station the little bitty loop station and then I just bought the big loop station what my mother did for me for Christmas so I vowed to uh, make this a worthwhile venture for her $500 investment and for for my uh so I'm run long delays through my loop station. And I can have a long delay pattern up to 40 seconds. I mean, it's not 40 second delay. It's like a four set, five second delay, four second, however much I choose. And then I syncopate my other delay inside of that time somewhere with a number divisible by that in thirds or fourths. And, uh, with the long delay, I can play several rounds. I'll play like three different riffs back and forth, like juggling three ideas. And I'll do that three or four times over a 40 second period with my delay on through my loop station. And then I could still have the long delay on and the short delay once the loop station has a hold of it. But it's really, really tricky. You gotta, you gotta press that button at the right time or you make a noise, a lot of noise. And playing with long delays and even short delays the way I do takes a lot of discipline and precision or you're gonna make a whole lot of noise people that are people that don't play with delays cannot play with my rig at all I have to totally set it up differently for them but if you love music you can get into it eventually everyone that I've tried to set up with my sound and give them the repeat thing and try to get them into the whole, yeah, they can get it. But I play, I'll, I'll turn my delay on a certain time and I play 
with my short delay, like right now my short delay is on 432 milliseconds. You know, a little, little more than a third of a second. And uh, 432 milliseconds. And so what I want to do is multiply that by 4 in my head. But I know where that's going to end up. It's going to be about uh, 30, 3457, somewhere in there. Well, I'll get my long delay. And so, uh, because four, 432 times 2 is 864, times 2 is 1728, times 2 is 3456. So, there you go. So, if I set my long delay on 3.456 seconds or somewhere really close, then my short delay on 432 will already be counting out the eighth notes for the whole uh, 3.4 second pattern. So, it gives me, I can just turn my delay on cold turkey, the long one, and I already have a riff right in time. And my short delay is in time with it. But I'm doing math in my head while I'm playing sometimes. I'm trying to like figure out what I need to turn my delays on and how I can how I can, you know, distract like an illusionist while I'm doing this kind of stuff. I'll turn one delay's feedback's way up so it gives you a lot of this echoey sound while I'm turning knobs and stuff. I'm juggling, man. <laughs> Juggling all the time. Sometimes I have to use a long delay, not full long delay, but like 600 milliseconds to figure out where the where the 320 milliseconds is. It's hard sometimes. I don't just have a little stomp button where I where I tap tempo. I don't have one of those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot, a lot of work. Not to mention, you know, all the sacrifice I made being a hermit, playing my guitar, not not going out and partying and stuff. And I have, I've, I've been out so much. I've seen, I have so many incredible friends. I could literally go out every night a week to see a different friend play somewhere. I'm not kidding. A couple different friends on any given night, usually. And, uh, till I get out doing it. Right now, my rig is so heavy, I can't move my studio back and forth. I need two rigs. I need some money, man. There ain't no money in this, but there sure is a, a, a lot of joy. You gotta play it because you love it, and I'm making money incantations the whole time, invocations, manifestations visualizations mantras yantras posting on facebook as i go on i do everything i can and then i have to like be all meditative and stuff while my browsers are freaking out i got five different browsers five different twitter pages four different uh, Facebook pages I post in a couple different places on a couple pages because I post about 30 pictures before I go online and pick them all out and resize them and then make these beautiful posts and create some kind of beautiful poetry that I create a thought a mantra an invocation a beautiful idea for the day and then I post a link on the top of my page and I post a link in a message box that I have a bunch of people in on Facebook if you want to get in that message box I can add you and then I post another link on the pictures that I posted earlier then I posted on my change the standard tuning back to 432 Hertz page and I posted on my music mosaic page and then once I'm done loading the video onto YouTube I go back and I post the video on all those pages and all my Twitter pages And then I try to eat, maybe watch The Daily Show, go to sleep, get up, and do it all over again. Figure out what artist I'm going to profile, give them kudos, put up a bunch of their pictures, put up a bunch of other pictures. 
and try to write to some people that are talking to me about stuff and I'm trying to find people that I can uh, integrate my musical expression with for sure. I don't care to have a band, but I, I'm certainly not averse to working with really beautifully talented people in any kind of recording circumstance and or a tour. And I'm just making myself useful right now by playing as hard as I can and using as much soul and thought and intention and love as I can. And doing it for the, the, the benefit of all who hear and for me it's healing. I also work with binaural waves and isochronic waves and I'm studying what the different frequencies do for the different uh, brainwave states that we have from delta, alpha, theta, and beta. Del delta, theta, alpha, and beta, sorry. And below that you have uh, epsilon and above that you have lambda, which are super consciousness frequencies. And I can literally dial in these frequencies to individuals when I want to do therapy sessions with them and find, and I can even make different versions of that same recording that I make for them, some with alpha, some with beta, some with alpha and beta, whatever, you know, mix it up. And, and when you're dealing with this range of frequency, up to 12 hertz is where beta starts. So you have three really critical brain waves all happening between zero and 12 hertz. And then beta starts at 12 and literally goes up to near 100, and then, uh, which is super conscious. And then at 100 to 200, lambda takes over. And lambda is like, like, like guru consciousness, meditation, super wave state. And lambda is always present with epsilon. They never find the lambda wave in the brain without the epsilon. And epsilon is below 0.5 hertz. So, so delta starts at 0.5 and goes to like 4.5. And then theta picks up at 4.5 and goes to like 7.5. And then alpha picks up and goes to like 11.5 or 12 and there's different different theorists and studies that differed a few few hertz here and there and uh so but they never find lambda without the below five hertz epsilon accompanying it so it also it kind of explains the whole chakra thing you go from the crown back down to the root the cycle is completely connected there's a duality that seems to to live as a as a presence. Well, my other camera cut off and I was just about to quit, but I will give you a little bit, a tiny bit of a demonstration because I am done, but since I babble about this shit, there's 432 milliseconds, a third of a second, less than a third of a second, 333 would be a third. It's not on yet, but I will know the time because of the short delay. The short delay, I'm counting the eighth notes in my head even.
So I have so many knobs. I have a wet to dry ratio. I have a number of feedbacks that it comes back ratio. I have, I can change the wave from sine wave to a, to a box wave. I can change the depth of the wave. I can change the rate. I can make those things sound like helicopters and space aliens, angels and demons. When I start getting feedback and just lost another pick. I don't know where that thing went, but I just dropped it. But anyway, yeah, that was a little, a little example of, of what I do with my, uh, did I see Pat come back in here about 25 minutes ago? He did come back in here, I think. But, uh, yeah, so that was a nice little demonstration, and You're in close proximity with Lambda right now. Good to know. Oh, and thanks for fanning me, brother. I'll fan you back. Uh, but I'll do more later. Like you see, I've played for over eight hours today, and it was enough. Not over, right around eight hours, somewhere near there. Yeah, I do have a Facebook. It's on my page, too, but uh, I'll also show you my, uh, whoa. Let's see, go here, my channel, and I'll go to here, and there. Copy this link. So, there's my YouTube page. And that's my set list at the very top. And there's my FB. Thanks, Joe. I'll be at it again tomorrow at some point. And hi, Miranda. Welcome back. I'm about to take off, I think. I'm trying to. But shit keeps happening. You didn't see any links? I put in two links. Did anybody else see the links I posted? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you, gotta, you had to scroll down to find it, I see. Yeah, I'm leaving, Miranda. I just don't care to go 10 hours today, but... I will another day. Pretty sure I will. But today's just nine. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. What I just posted, I think, was yesterday's five hour jam, or was that six? Or seven? I don't know. It was a lot. It was a five hour mosaic yesterday. Friday was a good one, too. That was, uh, that was seven hours. Today was nine. I do this more than a lot of people actually work and get paid. But I, I do get paid in some kind of currency. I just can't calculate yet. But I'll get more later. But, uh, yeah. Gotta let these fingertips heal. If I actually let them heal for 48 hours, I would be Superman. But uh, I'm gonna play tomorrow. Were you not in here when I posted it? It's right up, uh, just scroll above. You were in the room, did you, what'd you do, refresh? Did you, can you really not see that in the room right here? <laughs> Thanks, yeah, add me for sure. And I have a music mosaic page there, and uh, but you know I post them all on my regular page too. Well, 
I'm almost full. I've got nearly 4,000 friends on my main page, but I have another page called Temple of Awareness, Matthew Barbaro, and I have uh, changed standard tuning back to 432 hertz, which I believe strongly in, and there's other there's other resonant frequencies, but 440 hertz is not one. Sweet. I think I've fanned almost everybody in here. Yep, I have. I've fanned everybody that's actually watching me already. I'm tired of going up in the room and fanning anymore. But if people fan me, I will fan you back. I have definitely fanned you, Miranda. I know that. Yes, you have been fanned. And, uh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. 41 more days to go. And then I'll probably broadcast anyway, but you'll know. Y'all be sick of me by then. You'll have every, you'll hear, you'll hear everything you need to. Hopefully I'll keep getting better. I really want some more engineers to help me out with my, my pedal board, with my recording, with my keyboard. And with uh, software instruments, DJ sounds and stuff, I want to integrate. I want to get big. <laughs> Have big sound. Make people groove. Musicianship needs to come back into the EDM sound instead of just a bunch of DJs. There are a few musicians in the world, but they have to get into the EDM sound because... The further kids get away from musicians, or the instruments, the more you lose heart. You got to keep that heart, and that relationship with actual instruments. Electronics is great, but play instruments too. Ah. Sound is a sacred thing. Very cool. You know what? Hang on, Miranda. I'm going to give you something else to heal your ear. If I go to favorites, uh oh, something got deleted. I wonder what that was. Oh, maybe one of mine. Here we go. You never know when something gets deleted from YouTube. It's just gone. It says deleted. So yeah, this is a compilation I put. It's the guy has videos on YouTube, so I don't so I have it private, but there's the link to it. And it's a three hour compilation of a of a deep healing delta waves. It's actually good for sleeping. And it's really musical. It's really pretty, but it's not like what I do out there and challenging and making you wake up that stuff will put you out it's got binaural waves in it and uh it's really good if you listen with headphones and make sure they're on the correct direction meaning the uh the left headphone on the left ear and the right headphone on the right ear because that's the way binaural waves work and there's a specific direction that they that they go and uh that will very likely help it helps sinus infections it helps headaches it's it's deep healing music and make the invocation when you play it don't say i hope this works or i wonder if this works banish banish your pain banish your ailment banish whatever's causing it and 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 talk about the regeneration and the healing and it'll happen i promise well we can hope but 
I believe it will. This this feels like something that'll work that way. You you can make good things happen in your body. Namaste, peace and love. This video will be up on YouTube just above that link I sent you. Not this one, but the one up further, my YouTube link. It is. One day I'll make more of it, but that won't be any more this evening. Later this day, namaste.